these are people that have pretty much lost all contact with their family. They've done things to alienate, estrange yourself from their families. They've done things um, that society as a whole finds pretty, pretty bad. Once people of, of this custody level and security level reach that pendulum that they, they have hopelessness, um, that's not a way to live. These people have to live till they die in a prison setting because they have life without parole sentences. I think prisoners are living on the brink of so much misery and so much of a need for a search for a better way to live within themselves. Um, they're in crisis and um, they respond to help because they're in crisis. If you get somebody who's happy out in the community having a great old time, they're not going to take a risk. But if you feel like this, this might be your only chance to find peace inside yourself, you're going to take a risk. It was a very brave thing for these guys to, to do this because they didn't know what they were going to find inside themselves. So. I've, I've supervised many of these prisoners. I know them uh, from my years of working, 20-something years of working in the department because these guys are life without, and I guess I'm life without too. I, I, <laughs> I've, I've been there a long time, but I know these guys when we come up through the system together and um, they, they, they change, they actually change. Based on the battery of tests, the inmates are less angry, better able to control themselves, more stable, and uh, as far as institutional adjustment, the people or inmates who have completed Vipassana courses have a 20% reduction in disciplinary action compared to the controls. I sometimes worry that um, it sounds as if, and I have been asked this question once or twice, are you just trying to make them into better inmates? That really is not what happens here. It's internal control. It's, it's internal awareness, the ability to regulate your emotions, to understand your emotions from within. Um, how happy are people that are walking around who are scared and depressed and like an unexploded bomb that's about to go off at any moment that doesn't even know when they're going to explode? So we're not just trying to make polite inmates, right? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I like it. You call it, you, you call it what you want to call it, polite and nice. Um, I like to use the word respectful. Respectful is the best word that I know. When, when inmates start respecting each other in a maximum security uh, facility, polite works for me, but I call it respect, and it, 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 comes in, it, it makes it a very good environment, uh, very improved. This whole group up here, they volunteer around the prison all the time now. They're doing something. They're uh, trying to help people learn to read and write. They're doing Lombok reading and writing. They, doing newspaper stuff, they run faith-based honor dorms. They, that, these, all, all these guys are actually doing something positive at the prison for me right now. One of the things that we have to take into consideration in bringing the program is really the physical plant. You have to have a dedicated space for the 10 to 12 days of the program where not only the inmates can be where you can set up a, uh, a dining hall, a living space, and the meditation hall, but you also have to have in the same space a uh, office area or like in the gym over the, uh, the announcer booth where the teachers themselves can actually stay. There's another prison in Alabama right now that everything is said it would be per a perfect place to have a Vipassana program. The staff would like it. A bunch of the Dhamma brothers are actually there, hoping for it. But the problem is, the only space is a chapel where the pews are um, bolted, bolted to the floor the in the ch Christian chapel. And Ron says, this would not be a good thing to do for a Vipassana, to rip all the pews out of the chapel. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, it's not going The prisoners that you watched talked about how they needed a setting, a, an environment, and so we want to move into a uh, dormitory or a block is our vision to put all the graduates from the past few years in there, and I think we're well into 200 now uh, graduates that we have, so we want to dedicate a dormitory in space, and we're also sending officers and staff to um, Vipassana 
uh, centers for those guys to be able to relate to them, support them, and do peer pressure. We're scheduling for another um, round of Vipassana training with our correctional officers and staff, and it looks like I may have to be in that one. 